Good morning and welcome to another Haskell Kata. Um, it's set down today again. I am going to implement the Haskell bowling, I'm sorry, the bowling game Kata in Haskell using the algebra driven design method. Um, some things. Um, yesterday, I, and the day before, and I think maybe even from the very start, I tried to implement them as a loss. Um, uh, I tried to add some laws for um, rolling strikes and rolling uh, spares. Uh, the score would only go up by uh, so much, uh, but uh, I forgot that before a strike you could also have uh, roll a strike. So I'm not going to try to do that uh, that way again. Today I'll experiment uh, with something else. I will uh, implement the bowling game kata <laughs> like it's intended. Um, but then I will try have quick quickspec discover some laws. So um, maybe quickspec can help us um, find uh, laws that are more true than what I tried uh, was there. So I will add some more observations. It's not just um, the score and rolling, uh, although we may start from that and see where what quickspec gives us but try and see whether I can um, um, observe whether a strike, uh, whether we are on a new frame and um, maybe add some helper methods to roll strikes and spares, which will uh, roll two uh, pins, uh, two sets of pins or complete frames to see what happens. Well, that's enough for an intro. It might take long as you have seen yesterday and the day before. Uh, let's just start this. Okay, of course we start by getting the interface done. This is what we need to have. This is what we know the correct implementation to be. The constructor. Um, the role um, function. And the score function. Okay, now that we have this, um, also the implementation here. Um, let's make it observable. So QuickSpec can do something. Um, yep. Let's first see whether they are equal by score quick spec law that no we can't do anything make sure that we can generate a game um yeah the template is it's very like the very much like a bowling game i mean the template is set up beforehand the empty quick spec template. Um, balls. Um, wait, no, never mind yet. Okay, the signature, let's empty it for now. No, let's, let's add the constructors directly. Are the functions that we have. Uh, we have the constructor, we have the observation, we have the type that we can use, and we have background information that we want to give quick spec to see. Um, and we don't need to add signatures because um, the functions are not polymorphic. Okay. 
and yeah, well, empty these for now. Ah. Of course, we don't need to take an A into account. So that's for the first part of the types and the first part of the law, the quick spec implementation. Now the checks here. Um, test driven design, the way um, the implementation usually goes, because I just can't get my hand around a proper loss. Um, score of a game should be zero. No. Okay, add this. Uh, we can quickly get rid of this and just clean out the redundant imports. Um, yep. Okay. So far, so good. We have a score is undefined. That is true. For now, it will be zero as we decreed. Yeah. And of course, the first law comes rolling in. Hey, if we have a game and we score it, it will be zero. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's not really completely true. It, it holds for our implementation. Yes, that's true. Um, the next one, if we roll, um, A game of all ones, no, of all zero. Well, this this won't change anything in the implementation, so we should not write that test. Game of all strikes. It has one, no, three hundred. So score of, and here we go again. Pitfall. Roll. A new game, and we have twenty one. No, wait, a uh, ten thirty. I need to go bowling sometime. Um, a uh, ten, um, yeah, ten. So I'm sorry, twelve strikes. So it's for each of the frames. And the tenth frame gets two extra. Yeah, it should be three hundred. Okay. Now, how do we get there? Let's first implement roll. Uh, as you can see, there is no error for a no implementation in roll because although it's there, the score never looks at what happens to the game. So these calls are. Uh, never really evaluated. Okay, roll pins, and the idea was that you just add them to the game, and let's yeah, let's still prepend them. The roll so far. Okay. This implementation does not yet take into account what happens. 
but if we score a game with all rolls, no, we we will go to the recursive implementation of rolls. If we score an empty game, it should be zero. If we have um, yeah, if we have a strike, then we don't only take that strike into account, but also the next two. Uh, let's say there are two more, so we call them R0 and R1. Oh. And not like this, but we need to call this rest. So it's n plus r0 plus r1, and then just start scoring the rest. And that means that r0 and r1 are uh, taken into account for themselves. But the score of this 10 frame is the score um, of that 10 plus the two next rolls. If we have a strike, so we have an R0 and an R1. And I will call this R2. If we have a strike, so we have to say whenever these two added up R10, then we also have 10. And uh, we take R2 extra. And then we start scoring from the rest. So we have taken this whole frame because these two rows together are 10. And we know this because we only keep complete, complete frames because if those two are not 10, I'm not doing this test driven design uh, TDD style, I'm just implementing. Uh, if they are not, not 10 together, we just take R0 plus R2 and we score the rest. So we have no duplicate score for the R2. Then we also have the cases that nothing follows or not enough. So let's say we have a 10 and we only have one roll after it, so this is done with two rolls. And this is done with... Oh wait, if this is the last frame, so we have to... If this is a tenth frame. Okay, so if this is a tenth frame, we don't have anything after this. So there is no score for us. Make sure that we see the 10th frame. And if it's... even shorter than... Is this correct? Well, these are double. I should add some more parentheses for uh, clarification. Um, are we doing this correctly? Uh, so this is only for looking at the 10th frame. That is when the game ends. If we have any other case of 10s, then we do take them 
but also score also score the rest. So we cannot end the game. We need to have a completed game. That's that's a given now. Um, if we have a spare. Okay, need to uh, correct. And we are missing. Oh, this should be our zero plus our one plus score of the rest. And we are missing some other. Wonder if there is no rest. So only, we only have two. Okay. Hmm. And what if there is only one? Well, nothing much else to do. Now we have 320. Don't they count twice? This is the last frame just you get. Ah, uh, this is an interesting thing because now the tenth frame doesn't need to be special. Uh, or, oh wait, now it does need to be special because uh, I did have a double implementation because I think this one, if you count R0 and R1 twice, and this one would have overlap. They both would... Uh, score the R0 and R1 role, they are named the same here, uh, double. And now they don't. So I have to look up the roles for... Is, is 300 the maximum? Yeah, it is. There is a site that I'm looking at. Wait, I will put it in the comments uh, and in the links here. To make to clarify some of the rules because I don't think the Bollingham Kata really gives everything. It's the bowlingguidance.com all about strikes and spares in bowling. Um how many frames? How are points determined in bowling? The highest score is 300 if you score all strikes. The scoring rules of the tenth frame are different. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the bonus, uh, uh, when I look at these descriptions, the bonus for rolling a strike is the value of the next two rolls. But in a 10th frame, you are allowed to roll the extra balls, balls to complete the frame. But those don't count again. Okay, that's, that's good to know. So if it's a 10th frame, the score is different. And the scores are for that frame. So that is correct. That is what I did wrong the days before um, I was trying to add to the score to make uh, to say, oh, the score is double. No, the score, uh, the score of the next roll doesn't count double. It's the score of the next roll that is added up to this current frame, which has the strike or the spare. Okay. But, so, uh, I'm reading on this other side, bowling game. Um, I still have it on the clipboard. It says here, so you can see. Frames, how are the points? It is 300 if you score all strikes. 
and uh, the scoring rules of the 10th frame are different. If you made a spare, you will get one more delivery, and if you have a spare, you get two extra deliveries. But those deliveries, or the rolls, don't count for themselves. They are just to complete the frame. Okay, well, enough of that. Um, that, that took about a bit of time as well. So now the score is 300, and we can see what... Uh, um, What happened, uh, uh, law-wise? Um, we have a game of all strikes as score 300, but we should add another one, um, just to make sure. Um, the uh, game of all nines has a score of uh, 10 times 9 is 90. So we have. Wait, we replicate 10 times that we have a 9 and a 0. So nothing is a spare. And we have to concat them. Okay. Sure, the score should be 90. Is it? It is. Okay. And this game of all spares has a score of. So we have don't have twelve rolls. We have no, we do because the tenth frame also has one, and the let's say the final roll is a nine because otherwise it will be a strike. So you have I should live stream this so I could ask uh, chat um, ten times. We have a spare, and it's each time it is a 9 plus 1. And the last one is a 9, so 9 plus 1, the 9 counts, uh, so each frame is 19. Yeah, each frame is 19 then. Um, and it means 10 times 19 would be 190, okay? I get 181. So the is not complete the implementation. Where did I go wrong? Yeah, it couldn't be the last word thing I implemented, and that's the benefit of TDD. If you did go wrong, it must be the last thing you added because, or it, it does mean that you need to add something. Um, if we have a, yeah, it's this one. Because if we, I I did rescore the rest here because it was would be the first frame of more. But if it's the tenth frame, that isn't true. So now it's um, where R zero plus R one is ten. Then the score is R zero plus R one plus R two. Presentation, please. Okay, well, that's not the thing. Oh, is it? It's it's ten plus the nine from the extra. And that happens ten times. Yeah, it should be one ninety. So this law, this uh, line should be get it. Yeah, we get a 10th frame and it has three deliveries. I don't think this ever happens. Oh yeah, we can have two deliveries in the final frame. I don't think this one ever happens, but it's added for 
uh, completeness. are a lot of laws here that uh, were discovered by QuickSpec. I want to get into them. We only have five minutes left. Um, what am I going to do here? We could try and manually debug this or uh, mentally debug it. So we have nine and one. Oh, I am, this is, if you have been seeing this at all time, I am very sorry. Let's replicate this, but then also add the final nine for the 10th frame. Yeah, it works, okay. So the code was correct. Now, quickly, now look at the generated laws. Are these, are they interesting? Well, there is still the law of scoring a scoring game is zero. See, it, it changed. We, before it said, if we had, for any game, it, the score is zero. Now, if we score a game, it is zero. That is interesting and we know this. If we roll zero, haha, that's the law that we wanted to add. If we roll zero and roll anything for a game, it's the same as rolling anything after we roll zero. Is that true? I don't think it really holds. Does it? Are we generating enough games? Oh, after a, after a new game. Yeah, 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 after a new game. That, that, that makes sense. The first frame doesn't matter in which order you roll anything. If for any x, oh, this is a description. Uh, if we roll zero twice, it does. <laughs> the score is the same as an empty game, so you might as well start over. Funny. If you roll uh, x and roll zero, and you get a score that is x. Okay, that is true. Is it interesting? Yeah, okay. If you score um, x and, and 1, the score is x plus 1. That is interesting, because what would roll do? Ah, yeah, it isn't clamped. There is no uh, clamping of 10. The roll x plus 1 after a game, if nothing... Is the same as rolling x and then rolling one and then rolling x. Yeah, it's no spare, no strikes. It doesn't discover any laws about strikes and spares, so you can see. The final one is if you roll two <laughs> after x, it's the same as rolling one. Uh, yeah, if you roll two and then x, it's the same as rolling one and then x plus one. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't say that's. Uh, it is true because we don't have uh, limits on the rolls. Let's not generate <clears throat> ints here then. <coughs> let's generate rolls. And let's say that a roll is always, always um, uh, no, you know what I'm going to do? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I will do something different. I will leave this to tomorrow and uh, keep this implementation. We will uh, look at what we have and build from here and uh, try to add more observations. And as we said in the start, as I said in the start of this video, then derive more laws just to see where we, uh, where it goes. Because if we, if we keep to keep doing this every time, I keep ending up with maybe a complete game of bowling but no laws and no demonstration so thank you for watching if you made it here 
Um, I hope tomorrow is uh, something you look forward to, because I am really, yeah, I'm really wondering what will happen uh, with those extra observations. And then we can see where I did go wrong all week long with my loss that didn't do anything. Um, uh, as always, if you have anything, uh, uh, so any suggestions, uh, write something in the comments below so I will see what we can do with that other styles of um, kata etc. But for now, have a nice day and I see you in the next video.